Hey there everybody, Jimmy with To The Top Crane here. I had some people suggest that I make some uh, videos as it pertains to rigging. And also after watching uh, Andrew Camerata's video where he was picking some Holocore precast, I think covering some rigging basics, and this is probably a little more than basic, but um, is pretty warranted. I hope Andrew watches this video. It's going to have a lot of information in it in a fairly short period of time. You can always go back and rewatch it. Um, but this this is kind of the beginning part of a multi-video series on rigging. So we're going to cover the different types of hitches that we would use, um, and then also sling angles. I'm going to show you guys a pretty cool formula on how to calculate tension per leg on uh, on your rigging. And then we're going to talk about some other stuff you know, as it pertains to rigging, cable, stuff like that. So anyway, and hopefully my lighting doesn't screw with my whiteboard too much or vice versa. So we're going to start with, and I already drew a bunch of stuff on this whiteboard, and remember I write like a kindergartner and I draw like a kindergartner and I could do this in some pretty cool animated slides and whatever but for me I'm old school this is easier I learned by looking at a chalkboard this I don't have a chalkboard this closest thing to it so anyway all rigging is going to be connected with three basic types of hitches is what they call them, or or ways of connecting the rigging to a piece so the first one straight line so you just have your hook up here shackle down here or pick pick point or whatever the rigging is going to be in a straight line that means vertical straight up and down the next one is a basket so you can see that we have one sling comes down clear around a piece and back up and then the third is a choker so you have one sling comes down, the sling actually passes through the other eyelet and back, well, goes around and then back up to the hook. So basically it chokes a piece inside of here. The reason why these are important, in a straight line pull, which is what rigging is rated at, and actually the tag should have straight line, basket, and choker listed on the, on the uh, data tags. In a straight line, the rigging is good for 100% of its rated capacity. In a basket, it is rated for 200%. However, this is what hangs a lot of people up. For it to be a true basket, your two vertical legs must be less than five degrees of vertical. So they gotta be pretty straight up and down for it to be a true basket. If they're not, if they're out beyond like so or like so which would be like off a spreader beam or something it'd be pretty hard to do that or multiple hooks but if they're like so then it must be treated as a bridle if it is beyond five degrees of vertical and then you would have to calculate accordingly so hopefully that five degrees is showing up there and then a choker is 75% of capacity. So as soon as you pass this loop through this one down here and start pulling on it, then that takes this 100% capacity straight line sling and makes it 75% capacity. So I figured while we were on the subject of going around things and around things here, we'll quickly talk about something called DD ratio. So your DD ratio, let me get something to point with here, which is right here, is your diameter. So that's the diameter of the piece versus the small d, which is the diameter of the sling. And that's uh, typically as it pertains to wire rope slings. So your DD ratio minimum hand tuck slings is 10 to one. So this piece must be 10 times the diameter of your rope. 
otherwise you end up with too tight of a radius here in the bottom and same thing on your choked pieces you'll end up with too tight of a radius and you'll actually um, kink the sling on mechanical or swaged slings the DD ratio is 20 to 1 so that piece must be 20 times the diameter of your rigging so if that piece if you're if you're using a one inch steel choker then that piece has to be 20 inches in diameter for your sling capacities to be correct and then your absolute minimum DD ratio as as it's stated by OSHA 1910.184 is an 8 to 1 DD ratio so whatever choker you're using the absolute minimum is 8 to 1 okay so that's the three different kinds of hitches you got straight line basket choker DD ratio on a hand tucked is 10 to 1 mechanical or swage is 20 to 1 absolute minimum is 8 to 1 okay so now we are gonna move on to sling angles and like I said I know I write terribly there's three different ways to measure your three, your sling angles one is the included angle which is the angle of both legs included your second is your vertical angle which is the angle of one leg as it would pertain to an imaginary plumb line down the center so let's say we have an included angle here of 60 degrees then your vertical angle would be 30 and then third is the horizontal angle so that is the angle of this leg in relationship to the piece that you're picking or parallel to the ground so it'd be this angle right here this one is this one is the most commonly used in our trade this one is also used we don't typically use the vertical angle method very often but here in a second I'll get to why these sling angles are important and then also you'll see that I have some numbers written down here in red the never the NE stands for never exceed so on an included angle you never exceed 120 degrees on a vertical angle you never exceed 60 degrees and then on a horizontal angle you never exceed 30 degrees and that I mean 120 60 and 30 that that'd be pretty steep now we're gonna go to the sling stress formula and this this formula works as far as I know metric standard however you want to use it um, but that is right here sling stress formula and what the sling stress formula does is it allows you to use a tape measure and a calculator to calculate the tension or approximate tension you're going to have on each leg regardless of the number of legs as long as you do the math correctly and allows you to choose the correct size rig and correct strength rigging so your strength your sling stress or stress formula is your weight divided by the number of legs times the length of the rigging divided by the height equals your tension so if this is your rigging and you you know your weight you've calculated your weight you and you can calculate the weight of almost any object as long as you have enough time and uh, enough information available to you with where's, where's the old smartphone With this thing, there should be no excuses on not being able to calculate weights. So, let's get this thing back into focus here. It's kind of hard to do on the old camera here, or mirror image to me. So, sling stress formula again. Your weight divided by the number of legs times length divided by height. And you can also use your length at any at any point in here as long as you measure your height from the same point. So say this rigging was 60 feet long 
and you didn't want to measure all 60 feet of it. Well, you could measure up two feet, and then as long as you go from that same point, measure straight down, and measure the height, then that will give you your ratio. <coughs> so why is this important? Well, I've already thrown, thrown in the numbers on this board of approximately what I saw in Andrew's video, Andrew Camerata. And again, I'm not bagging on him. Um, I admire his go get it and get it done attitude. However, when it comes to cranes, you have to be very careful. I mean, he, he was using grade 60 tie down chain or transport chain for picking up hollow core precast, which grade 60 is not even rated for lifting anyway. Um, transport equipment is tested three to one. Rigging equipment's te typically tested four and five to one. So yeah, there's that. But let's plug in the numbers here and I will show you guys and show Andrew if he watches this video, how much tension he had approximately on each leg of his rigging. So his hollow core pre precast was basically 20 feet long. I estimated that he was about three feet in from each end with his rigging, so that would be six feet out of that, which would leave 14 feet. So essentially he had seven feet of rigging length with two legs. So he had 50, a 5,200 pound piece, two legs, his rigging length was approximately seven feet. His rigging height was approximately three feet. If you take the 5,200, which is the weight, divided by the number of legs, which is the end here, you come up with 2,600. And then you take the seven, which is the length, divided by three, which was the height, you end up with 2.33. So now we have to multiply 2600 times 2.33 and I'm using my calculator. So we're going to put 2600 times 2.33 equals 6058. So all of a sudden, because of his sling angles, let's write that down. And it's crazy how this math stuff works out, but it, I mean, it, it's math. To me, math blows people's minds anyway, it blows my mind, but anyway, with what Andrew had going on, he had approximately 6,058 pounds of tension per leg. And you'll ask him, well, how can that be? The piece only weighs 5,200. Once that sling angle gets shallow enough, the tension actually increases in the leg to more than what the piece weighs. So granted, he was picking up a piece that weighed 5,200 pounds. Given his sling angles, he had 6,058 or 6,000 58 pounds of tension per leg. That's why it's important to be able to calculate this stuff and know your sling angles. Also, what is overlooked a lot of times, and I, I know Andrew overlooked it in his video because I could tell, but like when you are using a chain around something, or even a choker or sling, this angle here, before it even makes its way to the the point where it's connected back to itself and up to the hook but this angle here also has to be taken into consideration and I'm sure he didn't because that was extremely shallow so I'm, I'm guessing the tension on each one of these short pieces of the same chain was even higher so there you have it hopefully this doesn't make smoke roll out of everybody's ears. Um, on the next video I will probably talk about different sling types, the pros and cons of both, or both, of all three of the most common, and uh, then we'll maybe go on to rigging inspection. So part two will be sling types, 
part three will be rigging inspection. I'll see if I can bring some stuff home and uh, we'll inspect some rigging together. With that, two top crane is out.